those days. I'm sure you, I'm sure you did. Um, <laughs> I've just launched the webinar, guys, so um, people are starting to, to join now. So, fine, perfect. Welcome, everyone. Yes. So, yeah. Welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us today. Um, just bear with us a couple of minutes. There's a lot of people signed up for this webinar. So we'll just give everybody a couple of minutes um, to join before we get started with today's session. Yeah, so Sarah then, cookie. <laughs> Where else is waiting to come in? You've got to give us some secrets. Well, I don't think I've got any secrets. Um, I think make sure your oven is preheated. All right. Um, so I cook. I cook without eggs, so making sure that your batter goes straight into the oven at that temperature. People who join in now are like, I thought I'm. I think I think I'm joining a blended, like blended learning webinar, and she's talking about getting a batter in the oven. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, you're gonna get used to it. <laughs> oh, that's good. No, I think I, I always remember cooking at school. But yeah, yeah. The, the, like you also, you always just talk about cycling. <laughs> yeah. Uh, after, after after cycling back, <laughs> the, the the cooking didn't look very good. <laughs> didn't look very appetising. <laughs> I actually think I'm a bit of a dab hand at baking. I do I do like uh, especially desserts. Well, I, I fancy myself as a bit of a pastry chef. Yeah. Mm, interesting. I must say, I, I just prefer eating. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm good at as well. <laughs> I have distribution of labour. I'll cook and you can eat. Okay. <laughs> uh, and Sarah can be the critique around it all, can't you, Sarah? Definitely, yeah. I'll be a harsh critic. Yes. <laughs> when we're finally able to share food again, we'll have to have a, a cook-off in the office. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he makes incredibly delicious biscoffee cake. Yes, I've heard. I've heard. So, uh, yeah. Well, hopefully you'll be able to share not just to uh, to Joe, but perhaps you can send some down my way as well. <laughs> See, I'll, I'll hopefully I'll make the journey. <laughs> <laughs> Might be a bit squashed when it gets to you. Yeah, yes point. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. But, uh, yeah. What about you, Roy? Um, what about me? You like for uh, yeah, I actually uh, I'm gonna start a risotto restaurant in a couple of years. When I'm when I'm older and I'm all grown up, I wanna cook my own risottos. Just like two or three each day, and then just serve a perfect wine. Already looking forward to that. Putting all these nice ingredients together. Yeah, it's gonna be good. Perfect. Cool. Well, yeah. um, we're I all think... invited, by the way. <laughs> I think we're about ready to get started. Um, just before we do, um, just a few bits of housekeeping for our attendees. Um, there's a Q&A box um, in the webinar, so we will be taking questions at the end of the session, um, as well as throughout. So please feel free to, to drop any question you might have in the Q&A box, um, or feel free to drop it in the chat. We will be monitoring both throughout. Yeah, we'll also be running some polls throughout the session, so please do interact with that because it will help us to get again uh, glean some information about you guys as well. Uh, and Joe, do you think it might help just to perhaps give an overview of um, yourselves, obviously, at uh, yeah, Access Planet? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So anyone who's not aware of who Access Planet is or are, we are a, a software house based in Lancaster from the northwest of England. Uh, we, uh, we sell one thing, it's a training management solution. And the idea behind it is to streamline and automate uh, all the business processes behind your learning or training. Everything from that first interaction with a potential client through to delivering the course, through to after course care, evaluation, certificate reporting and so on. Brilliant, sir. And really from, from a New Springs perspective, you know, trainers and training providers use New Spring uh, to create and deliver like powerful learning uh, results with a unique retention training uh, with a memo trainer. That means from a delegate's perspective, it's a relevant learning journey that is personalized uh, as a memorable experience. Um, so, you know, we find that that uh, obviously resonates uh, very well. And so today, um, you know, we're looking at this uh, blended learning masterclass. Uh, and five uh, strategies to get started. As you can see, uh, we have a, a illustrious panel of, of cooks um, from, <laughs> from that. And really uh, what we're looking at is, you know, 
what is blended learning? You know, and I'm sure through this whole process today, our interpretation that may change. Um, but if we just perhaps set the scene for today, that blended learning uh, is a rich mix of learning interventions, which takes place both on and offline. You know, I think if we leave it like that and we can then build upon that uh, as part of the uh, session today. Um, and basically you can see that we are gonna be using the metaphor of cooking. You may have heard us talking previously, um, but you know, please stay with us. And obviously hopefully you'll be surprised by the, uh, the final bake. So I would like to perhaps open it up and you know, the way that we're gonna go through today is perhaps look at it from a, a, like a scenario perspective and really to look at this first thing, you know, the outcome, what is a good bake? So from my perspective, you know, I was informed that I had to do a training session today. I, <laughs> I'm not prepared, uh, I became anxious. Uh, I questioned whether I, had to, uh, I was equipped with the right skills, the knowledge. And you know, so my first thing is that uh, I reached out for support. And you know, uh, when I got hold of the support, eventually uh, they I would turn around and said, "Paul, don't worry about it. Don't not worry about it. Tomorrow they would have forgotten the majority of the training session." <laughs> so I thought, "Hey, strange behaviour." But so then I got to think, you know, to myself, is that a good use of my time, of costs uh, involved in uh, doing something like that? So really, I took upon myself really to look at it and change uh, these attitudes and look to how I could differentiate the business, the culture. So hopefully you remember some of today's session um, uh, from that. And what I've done here, as you can see, uh, some of the bullet points um, is when we're talking about this, yeah, everyone will say, why? So why should we engage? So what I've done here is just really looked at some of those missions of success. And hopefully we can build out some of these sort of stories uh, as we go through today's uh, session and actually have uh, fun uh, whilst cooking and obviously using uh, uh, our instructions uh, you know, from, the, from the menu that's provided and obviously look at the recipe that's obviously built inside obviously the cookbook. Um, but hopefully if these sort of things resonate with you, you know, how can we differentiate ourselves as perhaps as a training provider? You may be looking for savings. If you're looking at it from a learning perspective, you may be looking at either time to competency as well. So hopefully you can have some takeaways uh, from this literally uh, using the food analogy. Um, so yeah, let's, let's have a, a good bake and more than happy to take some questions obviously throughout. Should we get a little bit of information on our attendees at this point? We, yeah, uh, I think it's really good to understand obviously the audience. So yeah, that'd be really good. There we go. So if, uh, if uh, people can um, respond to our poll, then that would be much appreciated. Yeah, I, I think it's probably at this point it's always good to say that you know, there's no such thing as a free meal. Uh, so uh, no, hopefully no, everyone's one. able to respond. <laughs> you did say that we're going to get all the audience to actually to manage the whole presentation today, uh, rather than us actually look at obviously the cookbook. So uh, yeah, they've got more in store. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> okay, cool. So if we just share that poll with uh, with our attendees, so we've got a nice blend of uh, of um, different role sets within the, the audience today. Mm -hmm. So obviously, looking at that information, that, that obviously gives us a, a good uh, ingredients, obviously for today. Um, but I'd probably be thinking about you know you know what type of organisations they are as well. So you know perhaps we can ask them to look at this uh, second poll as well. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, let's just quickly turn to question two. Just bear with me. Yeah, no problem at all. So, I mean, if we look at this, this is really, uh, from my perspective, making sure that we understand the, the audience that we're actually cooking for and obviously the ingredients, obviously, that would be most prevalent to these uh, uh, people that was going to walk through the door uh, and obviously enjoy the meal today. So uh, thank you very much, obviously, participating. Uh, and providing responses in in the poll. Yeah, we're almost at, we're almost there with our second poll. So it's quite exciting. This it's like being it's like going back to the to the American election, isn't it? Seeing how <laughs> see these results flying in. Hopefully, it won't take us a few months to to sort it on. <laughs> yeah, uh, I might say mine in in, in the post. <laughs> okay, cool. So um, do you know what? That's uh, that's quite interesting. Uh, look at how even that spread is between uh, instructor led and already offered off already offering blended learning approach so mm. yeah, quite interesting stuff yeah mm. it looks like a perfect sandwich <laughs> <laughs>
okay. excellent stuff so yeah thank you very much for that so i think that helps us obviously build uh the theme for today so we obviously looked at the, the introductions and now what we're going to look at is obviously how we break that down uh, to make it meaningful um and we see that as a, as a journey um of uh exploration uh, from that perspective as well so i think what we do i'm obviously conscious of the time so i think what we do is now I perhaps open up the cookbook and see what we're going to actually have here so really opening up you know what takes your fancy so <laughs> from my point of view um i think it's important um yeah to look at it from a a training provider perspective and uh, build on my experiences as well. So I had the privilege of uh, working for the fire service college as a, a training provider. Uh, they were very much focusing on leadership, knowledge, skills, uh, aptitudes, uh, with an interesting mix of you know technology solutions uh, from the learning and development uh, fields. I, I um, can certainly attest to that as well, Paul. I've uh, I did so I've done some work with uh, with the, um, the fire service college down in Morton Marsh. Mm -hmm. uh, what a beautiful beautiful campus they have down there. Yeah. Um, certainly some really groundbreaking training going on there as well and, and definitely definitely one of the most complex kind of organizations that I've yeah. ever supported yeah yeah so so really for today obviously to look at obviously what we're going to be cooking up is about me using my experiences but I think it's important that I'm looking at both from a training provider's perspective and also from a technology perspective as well so that's why I just wanted to make that reference uh, from that point of view and make sure we don't burn anything on the, on the way through so um one well, again is now we'll look at a situation. Um, what takes your fancy? So the situation that we're going to be using today, um, I was working as obviously a trainee provider, and we were looking to formulate a differential in, in the marketplace. Um, the, the challenge was to reduce the current course duration from 12 weeks to nine weeks. Historically, we had instructor-led uh, activities uh, requiring considerable resources, equipment, uh, and multiple instructors. It was a competency-based uh, against the national occupational uh, skills and evidence-based with inside the standard operating procedures. So looking at it from a business perspective, a business metric, it was very much about saving uh, in the course delivery. Uh, another business metric was the, the dropout rate of delegates uh, and then a you know, really important critical point uh, of the actual learning, it was a collaborative team exercises. So um, if we were short, um, that was an issue uh, for us. So we then had a pull upon obviously the, the scheduling team to release personnel from other duties. So it was a double impact on revenue um, because if you look at it from a learner perspective, I'm looking at the time to competent. Um, so I have an engaged delegate and then for a successful course completion. So these were the sort of really the criticalities that we were looking at. Um, if you can imagine though, it's like, mm, where am I starting? So always think about it if you've got a map. You know, so uh, I know where I am today and I know the end objective uh, that I need to achieve. So whether it be a job based tasks, operational frameworks or competency conditions that are being applied to that, you know, it, it's really important. But equally important is that uh, we have a map and uh, I don't mind openly admitting if I've got a map, sometimes I do get lost. Things do not always go right. And so as long as you're putting uh, mechanisms of feedback uh, that is so critical uh, when you're looking at a very much a blended approach to have valid and constructive feedback because you will need to do fixes um, from that perspective as well. So make sure you're equipped. Uh, and another key point that, you know, at this point is it's really critical to engage not only the, um, the delegates, but the business sponsors, the stakeholders, the instructors and the line managers, because everyone has an equal part to pay. Uh, and that's really what I wanted to sort of encapsulate and obviously look at the tips that we provide, you know, small steps, big impact, you know, don't think about a massive change in, in the cultures overnight, you know, you've got to be very much conscious of your culture, but all you could have a map and a direction of that travel and really from the, you know, from a travel perspective, you know, what we want to really see uh, is that what is going to be the next step. So the next step could be selecting your ingredients. So I mentioned, you know, being conscious of your culture uh, is so, so, so important. Why? You know, you know, you may get the feedback. Well, you know what? We've always done it this way, which is very, very true. But we know that everyone now is facing challenging times. So really the old ways don't open up new doors. We have to think about things differently. So if we can take about that point, and as I mentioned about 
engaging obviously with you know the, the business sponsors the stakeholders the delegates uh, and line managers you know and in, you know and very much to the point we use now here uh, is conducted uh, interviews um, with uh, say the instructors you know and you know this is a point really to what I'm trying to explore is that talking to people uh, that could be your potential part participants um, your delivery mechanism is so important so part of this exercise uh, I took upon obviously to interview every uh, stakeholder of inside that operations and talking to the instructors you know I found that they were frustrated they were not being listened to but what was equally important that they had great ideas for improvement and then they said well you know the equipment fails it's not meeting objectives you know we you know resource availability is an issue and end of the day, the instructors, you know, they had to create feedback to the delegates and action plans, which was consuming hours in the day and sometimes evenings. So not happy, not happy whatsoever. So, you know, and plenty of paper chasing at that point, uh, you know, for that thing to really come through to it. So delegates, you know, they they were sort of playing feedback and initially, um, you know, the experience is, ah, yes, it, it's, you know, it's, it's great. But then you always get back to the old happy sheets of like, you know what? Yeah, I'm dissatisfied with the food and the venue, you know, on, on the happy sheets. We take that, you know, we you know, we have to sort of take that feedback and obviously change. Um, but one thing that was quite apparent um, in this particular situation, uh, talking to the instructors, that they said, you know, no progression in repetition. I'm thinking, OK, that's not a language I actually understand. What does that really mean? So in, in the context we're talking about, the ingredients they were using was not agile to reflect change in difficulty, you know, a difficulty of tasks uh, at scale. So we basically had to break that down. So when we were talking about it, the, the ingredients we're talking about here is like, you know, repetition, the memory recall is so critical in, in the learning. Uh, however, you know, the scenarios they were using were expensive, operational costs for the equipment, you know, requiring those instructors. And there was a lot of wasted time, obviously with the delegates, they're just waiting around to practice their learning. Never mind the environmental cost of water literally just going down the drain. So there had to be a better way. That better way was a blended way. The use of offline, online, uh, questioning, testing, e-learning, feedback that was dynamic, perhaps using media such as video, discussion boards, simulation, and don't forget everything, what we all like as well, is have a good chat over the tea break as well. So make sure that uh, in any program, make sure you've got some good breakouts and some good tea and biscuits. Um, so really the breakdown from what we're looking at here really is that uh, the, the training plans, you know, look at the frequency, the importance and difficulty of the training and alternative ways to deliver, not at the expense of quality and the delegate experience. Uh, you know, stressing again, we talked about some of the business metrics here, you know, the course delegation completions was a business metric for final payment for them. So ensure that you've got an engaged delegates on your, on your program. And again, um, as you can see, um, looking at uh, the, the points. Do you know what, Joe, you, you're too eager again with the cooking, mate. I'm, I'm sorry, I just don't know what's going on here. But um, if you just take to the point with the tips, you know, just take some further reading and research around the 70-20, you know, obviously from the Institute with uh, Charles Jennings. There's some really valuable information that I urge you to look at, obviously, when you're taking uh, this, this journey. Um, so I'll, I'll push it back to you now, Joe, with that, that next poll. Yeah, sorry about that, Paul. Um, a bit quick on the quick on the uptake there. One thing that um, that you mentioned there that I think is really really central and certainly something that Access Planet are uh, um, always consider best practices to include your you know your facilitators, those people that are on the ground delivering those courses day in day out. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're not including those in that in that kind of in that bake, then you know you, you're really missing out on that kind of vital information from them. So that's yeah. certainly one of the takeaways that I took from 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 that. And as I say, definitely something that, that Access Planet encourage um, all of our clients to, to really kind of engage with their with their facilitators and service providers. Yeah, yeah it's some definitely... of my customers have had like really really good feedback from their from their tutors um, and been able to implement the, those changes really quickly. Yeah, it's really about best practice. So yeah, definitely so. So yeah, so I think obviously that obviously leads quite nicely into, you know, from the perspective of everybody here today about your own uh, learning interventions, uh, you know, what do you see predominantly? And I think it's really important uh, just to take this point uh, in time to think about that, you know, it's not all about technology. The fact is that uh, I know many, many organizations are still very much paper-based. Um, they produce handbooks obviously for the new starters 
um, uh, or the right through to the other way. Do you know what? I, I was talking to some uh, a team in, in America. We have a PDF. That is our training. So that's fine. That's great. You've got a great structure, but now you need to bring it to life with different interactions. You know, even if it's um, how do I under appreciate, obviously, the good comprehension that you've got of a particular class. Ask them to them to record it and then send it back to the, uh, the instructor or the facilitator on the program. So, um, yeah, Sarah, we obviously got a good, good response here again. Yeah, interesting to see um, preaching to the to the converted to yeah. the fourteen people already offering blending. That's absolutely fantastic. Plenty of people still with instructor led classroom based training, um, which certainly jumps out to me. Um, and e learning there as well, um, quite high on the on the uptake. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I wonder if this is the e learning and online stuff has taken an even bigger surge this year, especially. Yeah, I mean, I, I certainly think um, with the current current kind of situation, that's you know, it's it's a real opportunity to innovate. You know, it's it's thrust upon us. Uh, we have to be dynamic. You know, we have to make change, but that doesn't necessarily have to be a bad thing. But yeah. uh, you know, innovation comes out of these kind of times. So yeah, I think yeah. there's been some really big changes actually of mindset. Uh, within the industry and i think that's only going to continue to to, to uh, into next year and beyond yeah and i saw the the pit there obviously from lee uh inskip as well so yeah a very valid point that she lee just made as well so uh, and hi lee i'm seeing you for a long time <laughs> so uh, that's really good so uh thanks for for that um uh, participation um at that point so i think perhaps uh, let's move through the the, the cookbook um and see what we can actually start to sort of construct uh, at this point. So what we're looking at here is uh, very much the uh, preparing um, of the course. So from my point of view, you know, some really strategic steps that we have to look at. So it would be uh, analyze first, apply what works, make sure you use innovation, which then basically gives you a, a blend that's reality. Uh, and the blended learning, then it will equal the savings. So if you can follow some logical steps, a systematic way of, of training uh, is, is very key. So um, what it is, is like, you know, how do we change? You know, we have to, before you change anything, make sure you can measure it. So I would say, you know, first point is that uh, first conduct an assessment. Look at the prerequisite of the knowledge, the skills um, of the delegates, you know, look at it as perhaps a screening process. You know, uh, the testing uh, of those different interactions could be anything from open questions, multiple choice, all different styles uh, to meet and obviously support your um, uh, delegates because we all learn in different ways. Um, so it could be like you may want to use like a visual stimulation, you know, matching questions, as I talked about just a minute ago, the use of video. You know, if we've got a problem, you know, where do we go? Uh, we always look perhaps for a video. But obviously in this scenario that we're talking about, we also had the capability of having physical testing. So uh, from my perspective, you know, what a great bl uh, blend you can actually have. I'm not saying that every day now at work, we're all going to do 15 minutes of exercise. Um, but what I'm saying is that uh, get the right blend for you as an organization. Um, very much so. And uh, that will probably come on to our next workshop. We'll be looking at a marathon, not a sprint uh, for organizations uh, looking much uh, for a blended approach. So what we're looking at here is uh, a structured uh, approach that is looking at it very much from a situational awareness of the environment to reflect the real world. So it has to be relevant. You know, that is one of the critical things here that we're taking through. Um, it's got to be relevant to the delegates. Um, so we have organizations that, that branding is important. So you're taking ownership, uh, that it is very much a personalized learning journey, that the theory of concept and, and the, in this context, you know, they was looking at chemical uh, composites as well. So you're bringing in the science and then they were looking at the decision making model as well. So there's, you know, very much the technology, uh, the science behind it, and obviously the motivations. So, um, but build that all together, you're having very much like a team uh, concept of collaboration for like problem solving, you know, uh, and the training, you know, has to be relevant and progressive repetition as well. So look, keep reinforcing it with lessons, with learning and assessment. And the critical thing is don't keep giving them the same information because it's not progressive. So look at the dynamics of it actually working to reflect the progression of their learning because they're all working towards an end goal. It could be a uh, certification, it could be a compliance requirement for an organization. So make sure that your end goal reflects the learning pathway of those individuals. It's meaningful and it's personalized. So I would take away, you know, one tip and there'll see several tips again, 
is to, to build into the delivery that is personalized, adaptive, you know, and, and social communities, uh, as you can see, was very much listed in the global survey most recently with uh, the LPI. So again, you know, the, look at the tips at the bottom of the screen and really have a look at that and make sure that it, if it's reflected to yourselves that you're aware of it and see how you can actually apply it. And really, you know, we're getting to a point here where, do you know what? I want to start spicing this up. I want to add more flavor. So uh, Joe, fantastic for that uh, prompt. <laughs> but um, what I want to look at is, you know, from my perspective of looking at how we're getting to a good bake, you know, a great bake, an award-winning bake as well. It is um, looking at the, the flavoring and, and so the essence, um, you know, we would now just complete a deep dive to the preparation of the course. It's mapped to the learning objectives, the critical tasks, you know, for the right blend of the environment at the right time in the, in the learning. Um, we did take one, one instance actually, um, you know, I, I said, you know, do you know what? We don't always get it right first time and it's good to learn from the, from the learnings. So a situation um, that I was aware of as well is that um, there was um, an idea to replace obviously the real life scenario with a computer simulated environment. You know, it was leading technology, uh, wrap round vision, avatars, and the, the interactivity was based on behaviors. However, it was technology leading, not client leading. So just because it's got all the bells and the whistles, doesn't mean to say it's going to address the core competencies and the practical application which required. So yes, they were thinking making they were making savings because it was, oh, it, it's computerized, it's gonna save the money. No, not at that time. So be careful when you're adding spice to your ingredients. I think it's one of the critical things that I would like to sort of reiterate oh, at that point. Not, you know, there's gotta be a reason for, for why you're adding that flavor. Uh, absolutely. Uh, and also, you know, it's like all of us, you know, the, the ingredients can also be used in multiple recipes. Um, so one thing that I have learned as well um, is that, do you know what, I, I'm doing, uh, I'm putting all the ingredients together. I've got one bake here that's, you know, it's a, a lovely rock cake. The next time it's going to be a Victoria sponge, but there's some of the same ingredients, but I want to repurpose those as well. So one thing that I uh, have learned as well is that the approach to look at it very much as a modulized approach. So you could have a template uh, and then you may have issues with like version control or something like that. So the fact is if you've got a central area that you're going to, to the storeroom to get your ingredients out of, just think of how, how that could be applied. Um, because if you're looking at a training portfolio and you've got loads and loads of training and you've got the same instance happening in one course and you go and recreate it again, well, that's not, that's not a good use of the ingredients. If you've done it before, then just reuse that again in a modulized approach uh, to be effective and cost effective uh, in, in your delivery. Um, so those are the sort of key things I've been thinking about, obviously, when I've been making my bake. Uh, again, you know, we look at the, the tips down there um, because you know, the fact is of adding the, the flavor, the critical thing is I want to make it memorable. I want to come back again. I really enjoyed the taste of that. So I want another bite of it. So when you're actually cooking up a storm and whatever they may be in your bake, think about it from the end recipient of, is it gonna make them come back again? Make it memorable um, and equally bring your whole team with you. Don't just do it in isolation, involve all the team. And I'm sure then that would obviously help you with the design and the structure of your bake um, very much, but keep it modulized. Um, from that perspective. So, you know, this is making me hungry uh, in some respects okay. and I'll get to the point, I wanna start serving something up. Um, so what we're looking at now um, is what happens next? You know, we, we've gone through, we've, we've looked at the, the ingredients, how we apply the ingredients. We've looked at the environment, we're actually going to provide this in as well. So, but how do we know, how can we validate it? So one thing that you can look at is obviously looking at it from a test, pilot your courses, pilot your bake, um, but also consideration definitely must be given to the technology, the science and the motivation. So in the world that we live, um, we're in a world of acronyms and assumptions. Yeah, so you are here terminology of uh, TMS, so your, your, your training management system. Yeah, if, if you're looking at, oh, I, I need to get an LMS because that's what everybody else has got. Well, what today, what we're talking about is very much that whole learning experience and a platform for that. 
Uh, and we know that the value of having a, a TMS involved in our organization to provide that holistic support for us to be effective. But equally, what we have to think about is the experience that we're going to take once we walk through that shop and we have all those cakes. How am I going to know which one I'm going to take? You've got to make sure we can actually do a bake that is differential, very much obviously in the market space. So that's the element of the, the technology, the science. So uh, one thing that I, I've taken from my, my experience is ensure it's educationally sound based on theorists, you know, the, we, you know, the forgetting curve. You've got Dale with the learning cone as well and Bloom's taxonomy. There's so many things out there. So research it is so important and get the right mix. Um, and, you know, when we've been talking about piloting, you know, make sure that the people that are piloting reflect obviously the end delegates. Um, so when we're looking at it from a point of feedback, you know, some people struggle. Um, Sarah, you know, it gives me, shall we say feedback, but I wouldn't say it's always very constructive. Uh, I, I'm hurt. Uh, I don't know how to deal with that feedback. So what I want to think about it is what tools am I going to give the people that will be testing this out? I want constructive feedback. I don't want to say, do you know what, Paul, you've got a soggy bottom. That doesn't help for me. So really, from my point of view, look at it uh, and structure it out from a behavioral uh, a situation and the impact and look at those criticalities and then look at that also from a constructive point of view. Um, and don't, as we said before, don't think it's just the recipients, you know, look at the managers, look at the line managers, look at the, the senior management team as well, get their inputs because they will have a different view uh, as we talked about the business metrics against the learning metrics. Um, so I'm just starting to, to get to the point where, well, we talked about the main things, um, but the other thing that is so important and sometimes does get over shadows is uh, motivation. So technology, great, get the science, it's educationally sound, but what is the motivation for doing this? So, um, and what we could say is the motivation for me as an individual, I am a delegate on a course, my motivation is I need to get that certificate, I need to get that badge of honor. Um, but equally, think about it from the business perspective of the reason I'm doing that is because I need to be a differential in the market space, it's, it's a very competitive market space, I need to ensure that that's meeting the criteria for me with this investment. How do I change my cultures? How do I bring in a differential? And how do I make it memorable? So memorable is just not the learning experience. It's the, the experience of an organization. We look at it, you know what? I went to that shop and that was a memorable experience. So that, that's so, so, so important. Um, so what do we sort of take from that is that the um, feedback, is so, so important throughout. It is one of the critical elements that we need to, to, to reflect and how we build and how we, how we spend time building a successful project. So um, I would like to sort of probably come to a, a point where I've probably been doing quite a lot of the talking. Um, and I really wanted to sort of uh, give you the opportunity to sort of think of other sort of questions or other thoughts along that uh, process. Um, but equally, we're getting near Christmas and from my point you know how I would like to sum it up and like as I said at the beginning uh, it has to be a memorable experience so we're basing it today on uh, a cookbook you know I don't know about you at Christmas but you know um, I love to give out uh, a gift and sometimes you know there's no better present than, than a cookbook so what we're going to do to you for you today we want to give you a personalized gift and please, um, we have a, a QR code on the screen. You may have your phone available for yourselves, but equally after this webinar, we will send you a link so you can get that free resource. Uh, Cause I was talking to Joe and I'm not saying Joe's tight, uh, but he's got a quite a large family. And um, I think you want to give out five copies to your closest uh, loved ones. Is that correct, Joe? Absolutely. Don't worry, I am tight, Paul. I'm, I'm from the north of England. I'm very tight. So, yeah, <laughs> everyone in my entire family is now getting the blended learning cookbook for christmas absolutely but, but most critically joe as well is that yeah we have to cook books so hopefully you remember that part as part of the, the journey today but you know think about the ingredients so yeah we have the master chef in between that and really what are we looking at as the end game it has to be memorable has to be fun enjoy it but make it a memorable experience um so i just wanted to use the time that we have today to just to touch on a few of those things and we can obviously take 
uh, a deeper dive or take any feedback or follow up with anyone uh, after this webinar. Cool. Yes, we have had a question through from uh, from Gregor in the in the audience. He's asking, uh, have you given thought on how to evaluate the impact for the online elements if your clients come from a range of customers? Okay. Uh, Roy, is that something you want to uh, tackle first or shall I? Um, yeah, it's always an, an interesting question, evaluating impact on, on learning. Um, of course, you have the, the standard, uh, how do you... Sorry, uh, you have the standard, uh, how do you uh, feel about the course? What grade do you give the course? But in the end, what you really want to measure is the impact on the, uh, on the job itself. So did the learning transfer to the job? Uh, and um, I haven't found the online tool for that yet that really measures that. I think the, the most important thing is to, uh, uh, to come back after a few weeks or months, send a, a follow-up survey, say, hey, did you notice that this training has impacted your work? Um, why? If so, uh, why? And if not, uh, why not? Um, I think that can be a very interesting question as a, as a follow-up. Um, of course, one of the most effective things to do is to just go to the job, uh, see how they are doing and, and how they're acting now. Um, but yeah, when you have a range of customers coming from all different kinds of uh, companies and workspaces, that's a, that's a difficult one. Um, but following up later, um, that might be, a, might be a good one. I don't know yeah. if uh, Sarah or Joe have anything to, to add well, to that. Some of our customers have found actually that from going into um, blended learning that they can actually reach more audiences um, you know, across the world. Um, I know certainly some of my own customers have now got international clients that would previously have had to travel um, you know, to, to attend the courses. So they found that really, really beneficial. Yeah. Um, and they can use that blended approach to, to manage that. Yeah, I would, I would, um, I would, uh, I would kind of agree with you, Roy, to, to a large degree in terms of that kind of feedback process, um, impact, impact, you know, three, four months after they've taken the course, you know, whatever that kind of time frame looks like. I would also, I would also strongly recommend a pre course survey. So you can, um, if you use something like a Likert scale style questioning, you can, you know, you can ascertain the level of understanding before the course, and then after that course, you can compare and contrast the results. Um, if their understanding's gone up, then you know you obviously know that the that the bake's good. Um, six months later, uh, you'll remember. You know, you'll see how how remember how how memorable it was. You know, if that's dip, that's just an opportunity for you. Uh, to go back to that client with a different, you know, with a different option to for them, um, and if it and if it hasn't, you know, if it's still at that same level of of, uh, of understanding, then it just gives you an opportunity to sell them another another yeah. cake or another bake. Yeah, and an important one is also to let people think about the uh, things they want to achieve in a training beforehand. So ask them before the training starts, what is your main your main learning point for today? What do you what is your main learning goal? Um, and then let them reflect on that afterwards. And then indeed do that in two or three sessions, uh, spread over a couple of weeks, and then you'll hopefully be able to track the progress. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, one point I'll just add on as well, it just after the event, just look at the frequency of contacts as well to make sure you're reinforcing uh, the learning. Um, it, it's really, really important as well because uh, you put the investment in for, for the learning um, but obviously then you want to look at that retention element as well, because we always talk about the transfer of the knowledge back into the workplace. So look at mechanisms uh, that will look at the frequency element of pushing uh, relevancy uh, to that individual. And also we talked about the medium of uh, e-learning, but that could be any form of, of, of a training resource. Yeah, we've got another quite interesting question come through from the uh, from the audience. Just before we move on, um, we have had a recommendation for anyone who wants help with uh, with this. It's the Philips ROI model, uh, which you, if you Google search that, you'll get some some insight into uh, kind of measuring that. Um, question for the group: How important would you say the use and choice of software is on the success of a blended learning strategy? It's very important, I would say. <laughs> it's uh, um, and especially the the use, um, and that, that's what Paul so talked about in the beginning. Uh, talk to your uh, your people. How would they use a platform like that? What kind of learning would they prefer? And then you can also base your choice of technology on that. 
together with the learning objectives you have defined together with, with the taxon taxonomy of Bloom, for example. Um, if, if there's a lot of uh, evaluate or create uh, that needs to be done by your learners instead of the knowledge absorbing, then it takes a very different tool to uh, facilitate that kind of learning. So it's really important to know what kind of learning am I going to do? Uh, what do my uh, delegates feel comfortable with? Uh, and then, uh, yeah, make your choice based on those uh, uh, those things. Mm -hmm. uh, and one thing I was thinking about as well, Roy, is is the whole element of how it progresses as well. So, mm -hmm. yeah, so you know, the difficulty element uh, within inside of that um, sort of concept uh, is quite important as well. Because if it's repetition of just learning the same stuff. Yeah, that's great, but it's how I progress myself through that because I'll be looking at it from a, a professional development perspective, you know, uh, both from, from how I uh, perceive or see in the workplace, but also my own personal uh, learning as well. Yeah. Yeah, and the, there's a the blended learning strategy that was specifically in that question. And I think that's also a very relevant one because you really want to blend your uh, your learning. You have the virtual classrooms nowadays. You have the online learning uh, but you also want to make the online learning come back into your virtual classroom and you want to uh, reflect on what happened on the online part. Mm -hmm. uh, so getting a platform that really can integrate those two things and, and uh, yeah, it's really, uh, really helpful, I think. Cool. So this is quite a contentious one. So looking at, uh, you need to rank these three things in terms of importance. Uh, it might be quite difficult. Uh, number one is content. Number two is delivery technology and styles. And number three is delivery mix. So how would you rank those three? Which would you put top, second and third? It's a difficult one, that one, isn't yeah. it? I think they're, I think they're, they're all, all intertwined or something. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. they all have a really strong impact on, on each other. Yeah. I mean, you can have a perfect delivery mix, but if your content's not up to par, then... Is your, is your delivery mix up to par if your content's not? Uh, together yeah. with your technology, uh, if you have great technology, but you just make videos where the sound is horrible, then it really doesn't mean anything. Mm -hmm. um, but next to that, you can have great content, but if it doesn't work on a screen because your technology is not working, well, then your content's worth nothing. So I think it's a, it's a mix and um, yeah. Uh, like like everything, I think there's no, no right answer to that. Because no. equally, if you look at the delivery style, the fact is of you know the who are the delegation. The the fact is that you know what you know I, I've been you know, we we go to a, a venue for the training or I can access it via the computer. Or the fact is then I may want to take the the, the lesson plan using m like mobile technologies as well. So I think it's really important you know when you're designing something to know as we articulated around who is the target audience. What are their, their preferences uh, around the, the delivery styles, the delivery mix and, and the content? Because I think one word that probably can answer that is the relevancy. Yeah. Is how I probably respond to that. Mm -hmm. And that's why that yeah. theme, as we've been discussing, becomes, becomes so important about understanding, you know, each one of those kind of elements and, and continually kind of getting that feedback from from your providers, from your, from your students, what have you. Mm -hmm. um, interesting, interesting. Um, another interesting common comment on the technology side of things uh, is how you deal with uh, different organisations using different tools. So, for example, you know, Gregor's organisation, you know, they don't don't use Zoom. Others use Teams. Some use Adobe Connect. From my from my standpoint, um, I, th I think that again is down to your audience. Um, you know, if you. If you, use, if you are you know, delivering a course to an organization that use, it doesn't use a specific tool that you have, then you, know, you, need, to, you, need, to, uh, you need to be able to adapt, uh, perhaps use their tool. I mean, most of these tools out there will enable an external, an external person to, to present within that kind of, within that kind of infrastructure. Um, so I think it's just about being adaptable uh, for me, that in terms, of, uh, in terms of what technology you're using and what technology you have open to you. Um, yeah. I don't know if anyone else has got any thoughts on that. Yeah, I suppose I, I, um, some of my customers have taken the tactic of just um, as soon as the customer is sort of booked on the course, communicating what tools to expect, you know, on the uh, um, on the day and, you know, preparing them for that. This is what you'll need. This is what, you you know, we will be using. Um, and then to like requesting to get in contact if there are any problems with that and just making sure that your delegates have got the most info that they can. 
I mean, Sarah, would you say then it's really trying to set the, the, the expectation? Um, so, you know, and obviously then reduce any sort of anxieties um, because it may be new technology to them, but not for others. Um, have you sort of had any experiences around that? Yeah, well, so I work um, quite closely with a, a, a few universities. So obviously they, they train a, a range of, you know, students, staff, um, you know, lecturers and that. So some of these people have never used Teams and Zoom and stuff. So they've got quite a comprehensive um, guide on in their jo within their joining instructions on how exactly to access Zoom, how to download it onto your computer, you know, how to set it up, how to test. They've got a really comprehensive guide in there. Mm -hmm. uh, another thing that I, I found as well is that uh, they, if you just go with the like the Zoom or the the, the, the Google Meet or something like that, it, it, you have to be very conscious as well that you're not. That is not replacing the, the interactions or the immersiveness of, of the learning as well. So it's very much like this type of session. But if I am looking at it from a learning point of view, it's still how you're going to provide those immersive experiences um, is another important factor. So, you know, when we talk about different interactions, make sure that you've actually got that built into your delivery model as well. This is another question that's come through, which is quite poignant considering. Uh, so what? how do we think the del delivery content has been impacted by the kind of work from home environment? Do you think that has, has, an, has had an impact? I mean, from my perspective, um, it's had, yes, it's had an impact. And from my conversations, it's accelerated the thought process yeah. uh, of organisations. Do you know what? Do you know what? We're going to do that next year. Uh, oh, we've got it in our plan for two years time. Now the, the situation is we need to do it now because we're being overtaken by the other people that have. Um, but the, 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 the issue is to make sure that when you do take that step, that you've done your research and you're actually going in the right direction um, is really important because as Sarah was talking, you know, from uh, an educational perspective of universities, well, they have, you know, use of like virtual classrooms that has different functionality to using it as a webinar. Um, I was doing a situation with, uh, in the aviation sector where it was a simulation business and they said, you know, well, we've got a dispersed, um, pilots basically sitting in hotels costing us an absolute fortune. We have a simulator that's, um, uh, fixed location because we normally have classroom activities so then it's like do you know what how do we use this technology that we're talking about but still have the immersive experience and they were talking about streaming content as well so again it's sort of thinking about the adaptations um, that you want to use to ensure that you're actually meeting uh, the learning objectives um, from any mechanisms or any media that you actually can bring to the fore. Yeah, this, it's interesting. We had, um, talking about that, we have a, one of a, an organisation that we work with, they, they kind of pivoted into online board games in terms of, their, in terms of the immersive experience, um, playing board games online um, mm -hmm. as a part of their kind of learning strategy. Um, obviously, they used to play them physically and face-to-face, -face, but they, you know, they managed to pivot that online. And it's you know, for the idea being that it doesn't affect that kind of immersive experience. Mm -hmm. You still get you know, the outcomes of the learning is still there. You know, it's just a different, essentially a different medium by which it's it's been shared. Yeah. yeah. And even within webinars and virtual classrooms, there's a big difference because what we're doing now is, of course, a lot less engaging than if you really do a virtual classroom with, for example, a board game uh, or really post-its on the screen, working together in a document. Um, you can really make some innovative uh, learning activities in a, in an online virtual classroom um, with the regards to the question what sort of software uh, to deliver better content from re resolution point of view um, well I won't preach for my own choir but uh, I think one of the other ones is uh, Fitero I've heard a lot of good stories about that uh, it's a German-based company who uh, uh, deliver uh, virtual classroom training uh, and some of my customers have it integrated with a learning journey in a new spring. So you offer content as videos and, and some uh, articles before the virtual classroom. And then you go into that virtual classroom and it offers a range of uh, possibilities to, uh, to get engaging uh, online, uh, online learning. Mm. And then go back to the learning platform and make that the, uh, the blend. Cool. Okay, guys, so we've got, I think we'll, we'll have one more question because I think we could probably sit on this uh, in here talking, talking for the entire, the entire evening. So if 
final question, and it is, do we think, or does game, gamification help with retention rate? I think gamification is really good for uh, engaging with the content and for uh, external motivation, getting level up, uh, getting bonus points, um, uh, receiving, uh, receiving, I don't know, small gifts when you achieve something. Um, it keeps people engaged. Um, and if your content is up to par, then I believe that it can also help retention because people will probably practice more with your content since they are more motivated because they want to have to, those level ups, for example. I mean, you see how, uh, for example, Geolingo works uh, with those levels and with those points. I mean, people are hooked. They just want to play it all day long, not only because it's so much fun to learn a language, but also because you just want to get into a higher level, get that streak. Oh man, that streak. I've heard people saying, I've got a hundred day streak on Duolingo. I mean, that's a gamification element uh, and it doesn't really necessarily contribute to the learning, but it does because people just want to have that streak. So yeah, um, I, I think not directly, but it definitely helps. Yeah. Yeah. I think um, it's quite interesting in compliance as well, in terms of something mm -hmm. that you were talking about, Paul, that kind of speed to compliance gamification, you know, if you can, if you can keep people motivated and keep that retention, then it can really help kind of expedite that um that that's uh, that retention um sorry that's uh, that speed to compliancy um one one final kind of sub question or, or just to, just to tack on to the end i did notice uh, quite an interesting comment in the chat which was how do you think um how do what about learners with limited digital skills so how would we how do, how do you think that how, how do we help people with those kind of limited digital skills i yeah. personally think something that sarah mentioned uh, a few minutes ago is really key for this, and that is preparing your preparing your learners for, for what they're what they're going to what they're going to experience within those sessions. Okay. Um, and that is, you know, how you communicate with them, making sure that you know that they're they're aware of what they need, what's going to happen, how it's going to flow. I don't know, Roy, you seem to to think the same. Is that right? Uh, yeah, I also think it's really important to prepare uh, your. Uh, the way that people should enter your virtual classroom or your learning platform, provide them with a handout that says do these and these steps to uh, to join. Uh, give them a screencast saying, all right, I'm going to talk you through it. If you click this link, this will open up. Click on this, uh, this dialogue. Um, just try to help them as much as possible. Uh, yeah. I think yeah. that would really... Uh, um yeah. Another example as well that um, I was working with a utilities organization um, that was every three years, um, they have to assess uh, their engineers. And um, so I, I was impressed. It was similar to the previous question around gamification. I said, oh, great. You know, I said, we're looking at changes, Paul. If you, do you mind just coming in and having a look at it and perhaps giving us some uh, advice on that? And he said, we've got some challenges. So I looked at it from a visual perspective. I thought, yes, I, I get the learning journey. I look at the objectives. He said, yes, but Paul, what you're not thinking about is our target audience. They're engineers, they're um, persons of a, a certain age. And I said, okay, uh, where, where's the challenge? He said, well, look, here we go. We're filling in front of the computer and here comes a Game Boy controller. You tell me if your dad can use a Game Boy controller uh, appropriately. So I think it's about using the right technology at the right time. And some of the other points we talked about, you know, do not breed anxiety into the process. Focus on the, the objectives, the learning objectives, the, the assessment objectives, because if you don't and you lose sight of that and then technology takes hold, then you're going to lose. That's um, the learning process. Yeah, exactly that. Yeah. So, yeah. Much clever. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Get that blend. <laughs> I've just got a, a, a note that... Uh, uh, more people can download the cookbook. We've seen a spike in, uh, in the cookbook download, so thanks all for that. But if you haven't done that, please uh, view the QR code because I think it's uh, if you like this talk, it's really interesting to uh, to read the book. Yeah. What we will do as well, Roy, is that anyone who doesn't have a QR scanner, we will send the link out to the to the blended learning cookbook as well in our, our follow up. So, so anyone who's frantically trying to download a QR code scanner, yeah. <laughs> we'll uh, we'll sort you out later. Um, okay. Roy, Paul, thank you, Sarah, thank you for 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 today's session. I think it's been it's been absolutely brilliant. It's been great talking to to all of you. Um, Thanks, everyone. Bye for me. And, uh, yeah, and it's been a Thanks. privilege uh, to meet you guys and obviously everyone that's on the session today. Uh, we look forward to catching up and hopefully provide other information 
that is uh, relevant to yourselves and interesting. And hopefully do remember, cookbook, mm -hmm. get the right recipe and make it memorable. So thank you very much for your time and uh, speak soon. Take care, everybody. Thanks. Thanks. Everyone. Bye. Bye-bye now.